Welcome to Custom Reads. Let's start with the story. Update number one, how I uncovered his secret romance and planned my divorce. The final argument. My soon-to-be ex-husband and I had one last argument before the move. He asked me to explain why our relationship fell apart. It struck me as odd because he was the one who had cheated. Still, I repeated the same reasons I'd given him months ago. He dismissed my explanation as nonsense. I believe our relationship shifted with the arrival of our children and the added responsibilities. He seemed to yearn for our earlier days when life was easier and carefree, which might explain why he's now involved with someone new. He struggled with the transition from spending money on fun activities to covering family and home expenses. Perhaps he was looking for attention and avoiding his share of responsibilities. Maybe if I had prioritized him more, I would have neglected other important things. If he had pulled his weight and shared responsibilities, we might have had more time together. I handled most of the parenting, grocery shopping, meal prep appointments, chores, and family planning, while his responsibilities were minimal. I always hoped that our hard work would eventually lead to relaxation and enjoyment. Maybe that was my mistake. I showed my love for him every day by taking on more tasks so he could relax. Unfortunately, if he was stressed, it affected the entire household. But that's a story for another time. This conversation revealed why he was talking to her he wanted attention. He admitted she gave him attention whenever he wanted. It's easy to feel that way when a relationship is just texts and phone calls. But what happens when it becomes real life, day in and day out? I asked him what would happen when he moves in with her and she starts putting her kids first or if her work becomes a priority or if they struggle with bills. He didn't have answers. I questioned him about how this fantasy long-distance romance would handle the reality of everyday life. I don't think he considered that. Can he maintain his best boyfriend behavior? Will everything stay magical when the world no longer revolves around just him and her? He'll find out soon enough. I know I might get criticism for this. People might say I neglected him, leaving him no choice but to leave. But let's not forget that he neglected everything in our life, leaving me to pick up the slack. This isn't a new story. Some spouses have been doing this for years and what's their reward? The spouse they tried so hard to give a better life to leaves or cheats. Is this manipulation? Am I sabotaging myself by trying so hard to make everything easier for everyone else? All I wanted was an equal partner, but I never got that. Mediation Meltdown After weeks and months, our mediation paperwork was finally completed. I thought I'd feel relieved, but I didn't. We had agreed on everything, but there was one section our mediator added that we hadn't discussed. It read, New partners, each party agrees that they will introduce a new partner to the children, only if he slash, she is in a committed relationship for at least months, each parent will inform the other party prior to introducing a new partner to the children. While this wasn't something we talked about, I think it's an important aspect. My ex doesn't think this should be part of our legal agreement. He said, that's a conversation between you and me, not something a court or judge should be involved in. While I understand his point, my perspective is that we are divorcing, and nothing should be left to a handshake promise. We could agree verbally, but with legal custody, we could renegotiate and deny new partners access. Having this in writing protects us both. He insisted he wouldn't sign until that part was removed. If the mediator included it, it must be common practice in divorces. So I asked, when does she plan to visit? I assumed this was the motivation, she might be planning a trip here soon, and he wants to introduce her to the kids. He claimed she had no plans to visit. So what's the harm in waiting three months if that's the case? Let me be clear, my motivation is my children's well-being. Their father has just left. They need to adjust to this new life with two homes and visiting hours before complicating things with a new girlfriend or boyfriend. I've also scheduled appointments with a psychologist for next month to help them process the divorce. Now is not the time to add more complexity. Every parent wants to protect and nurture their children. His affair partner waited five months to introduce him to her kids. Why can't we wait too? Changes Last week, I had to reflect on what mattered more, my pride or moving on. From the start, I wanted him to be a present and involved father. So, after a discussion that turned into an argument, we adjusted our custody agreement to give him more time with the kids. Over the past 10 years, he's never been very active as a father. Maybe now he feels the need to step up. Either way, I hope this change benefits the boys. I know some of you might think he doesn't deserve this, but I'm making this decision without regret because I know it's temporary. He'll be moving in a year or so, and once he does, our arrangement will change. I'm a bit worried that the kids will get used to having him around only for him to leave in a year. 
that was a big reason for my hesitation to agree to this change. I've tried to make the best decisions for my boys, while it feels like my ex is only interested in winning. I also made him agree to put our new terms and conditions, including the updated child support payments, in writing in our mediation paperwork. I suspect the delay by our mediator in providing the paperwork led him to overthink and want to change the agreement. He agreed to it in January, but now claims he never did. So the mediator just created these terms out of thin air. Sure. I also think his girlfriend might have influenced his decisions. I'm sure he told her how wonderful and involved a father he has been, which might have led her to encourage him to seek more custody. Little does she know he doesn't even have car seats in his car because he never takes them anywhere. He doesn't know their doctor's names, their quirks, and has little patience for them. But I'm sure he's claimed to be father of the year. Maybe this increase in custody will prompt him to move sooner. He took the boys for an overnight last week and when he dropped them off, he was grumpy. He said he spent the day catering to them, didn't have time to eat, and barely got any work done. Oh, like me every day since he left. He's not prepared. But that's okay, I'm done shielding him. These are your kids now, you can see what it takes to care for them and balance their everyday lives. Maybe he'll finally understand why I never had time or energy to cater to him. Boundaries Last week was our final mediation meeting. My ex claims that the mediation we had in January wasn't final. I was relieved when our mediator confirmed that January's meeting was the final one and that his changes were just additions. Either way, it's done. Mediation is complete. Now the actual divorce process begins. I told him I wanted to start it ASAP and he responded, I know you want to rush through this, but it takes time and can't be done on your schedule. So let me get this straight, he was the one who cheated for months and has a girlfriend, but my desire to finalize the divorce makes me the one rushing. No, he ended the marriage. We're just finishing the paperwork. The marriage was over in September when he started sending her flowers, or maybe in October when he flew to her state during a pandemic to be with her. So pardon me if I want to make it official. He's already severed it emotionally. Even though we aren't legally divorced yet, he has been taking the kids three to four nights a week on a rotating schedule. Honestly I'm glad he's stepping up, but my children don't like it. When I tell them they're born to daddies they cry. Since he lives in an apartment and they've grown up in a house, my oldest calls his apartment a hotel. They miss me when they're there, and it breaks my heart. One night, my youngest called me from his iPad four times. I wanted to give them space with their dad, but after the fifth call, I answer. My ex was working on the computer, and my youngest was left alone in his room. He was bored and seeking attention. I told him to play with daddy when he was done with his call and then I'd see them soon. After we hung up, I received an angry text from my ex saying we need to respect each other's time with the kids and practice boundaries. The children were asking him when they'd be going home. He said this is their home too, and they should understand that. Here's the thing. 1. If he paid attention to the kids, they wouldn't be calling me I understand he's working, but I work from home too and they never call him while I'm here. I have to encourage them to call him, and even then, they don't want to. 2. Boundaries? He's been coming to my house every night on my days to say goodnight. So he can come to my home and see them for 45 minutes every night, but I can't answer my son's fifth call? Here's a boundary, he can't come here anymore. He regrets bringing this up because it hurts him more than it does me. I'm happy to play fair but he needs to play too. The gym asked. I've always been flexible. Well, physically, not so much with age, but flexibility in situations has never been a problem. My STBX fought me on a 50-50 custody agreement one in which I agreed to. Our original agreement was for a 65-35 split, which gave him every other weekend plus a few dinner time visits in between. For someone who has never been an active father, this should have been enough. Apparently, now he thinks he's super dad and wishes to take the lead. This would have been helpful years ago but better late than never. He contacted me the other day, telling me he will be picking up the kids for two overnights this week. Mind you, he is supposed to have the kids two days in one week and then five days the next week. I tell him that he can have the kids over the weekend as well. This is when he tells me he has several work trips and personal trips to see his girlfriend coming up, so he needs me to be flexible with the visits. Flexible? I thought you were the, I need to see my kids more dad now. The dad needed more time and less time and child support for me with his children. Where did that guy go? In April, he had the kids for eight nights in total. Total. When I mention that this isn't 50-50, I'm the bad guy, and I need to be understanding of his work and personal life. Excuse me, 
I have work and a personal life too. Well, it's not really a personal life, but I hope it's too soon. Why do I have to be flexible to you, and you aren't to me? I told him I offered him the 65-35 split that would allow him more free time for work slash pleasure, and he didn't want it. He said I was steamrolling him into taking that agreement, and he wasn't happy with the time he'd have with the kids. Touched that he wanted more time with the kids, I agreed to this, and now that it's in black and white, I have to have the kids more and receive less child support because you can't keep up with the deal you wanted. I think, in all honesty, it wasn't about seeing his kids, it was about not giving me what I asked for. He says I rely too much on our agreement and that it's just a guideline, we don't need to live and die by it. Um, but I think we do. It's a legal document about our children and our assets. So if we don't live and die by it, will you stop paying child support? Or maybe decide that you want things that are mine? It's just a piece of paper, right? For a man who leads a double life, has an affair, has a girlfriend, and wants out of this house, he sure doesn't seem to want to face the reality of what a divorce actually is. So if he doesn't take the kids for his 50 slash 50 visits, what are my options? Start this process again with another agreement. Take him to court. I think perhaps my best option is to not be flexible, and when the numbers don't add up, we go back to court. I don't see any other option. Transparency. This past weekend was Mother's Day. It was a strange day this year, but still oddly more enjoyable than previous years. My STBX has been taking the kids on the schedule I created, and so far, there have been no issues. He has yet to pay me any child support, but I will give him till the 15th till I make a stink about that. The boys were with him over the weekend, but he returned them on Sunday so I could spend the day with them. I asked him while he was here if he called his grandmother yet. His grandmother is the only family, besides his equally unfaithful father, that he speaks to. He told me he spoke to her and they told her that we had separated. I was shocked. This was a big one. I knew it would be hard to tell her, and the news would give her a heart attack. He said she was upset and shared some of their conversation with me. He told me he did not tell her why we split, he only told her that we had. While not the whole truth, I was happy to see that he took this tough step. Fast forward a few hours later. His mother calls me. She and I have a fairly good relationship, but my STBX is holding a grudge over things from the past and refuses to speak to her. I had asked if she heard the news from her mother. She was confused. Well, it turns out it was all a lie. He never told his grandmother. The conversation he said he had was never actually had. I speak to his sister as well and find out, after 13 years together, that this runaway with a girl who'll give me more attention is his mo. She told me that before me, he had lied to his girlfriend of four years, saying that he was going to spend time with his dad, and it turned out he had gone away for the weekend with another girl. Now ain't that some shit? My lawyer will be serving him the divorce papers next week. When I told him for the second time that I was hiring a lawyer to do those papers, and did not want us to do them ourselves, he got angry. He accused me of wanting to try something shady. No, sir. You have been shady enough for both of us. When I reminded him that I'd already brought this up with him, and that I had been getting quotes from lawyers, he accused me of not being transparent. You're kidding, right? He will always be the victim, never wrong, and always right. The breakdown. My STBX had the children this past Friday Saturday, and then again Monday Wednesday. I went to pick them up today after work and that's when the breakdown happened. My STBX started to cry. He lost it. Apparently for the past three days, all our children did was ask to go home. They cried and constantly asked how long. He tried to tell them that this was their home as well, but they wouldn't hear of it. Now, part of me feels bad. It must be terrible to have your children reject you. But on the flip side, he's never been the parent he is now. He takes them places, plays with them, reads to them, bathes them, etc. I don't think he understands that you can't just flip a switch with these kids, and they will gravitate towards you. I know he is trying and I appreciate that, but it's too little too late. I have tried to be supportive and understand that having a father is important, but I honestly don't think they want him. Again, they are both under 10 and young, they don't fully understand. My oldest asked me on the ride home if they could never go back. When I explained that we are both parents, love them, and want to spend equal time with them, both children protested. I think my STBX realizes this is too little and too late. He is regretful. I don't know how to make this situation easier for everyone, but honestly, it's not my problem to solve. I asked him to take a 35-65 split, but he rejected it, saying it wasn't enough time with the children. My suggestion of that split wasn't about me wanting more, it was about what I thought our children could handle. He just wanted to win and get me to convert to a 50-50 split. 
Well, you won. Here it is. How's that working out for you? Maybe if you had thought about what was best for them, and not, defeating me, maybe this would have ended differently. A summer situation. After his breakdown, I didn't contact him for a while. I knew he needed time to cool off, and if I talked to him for any reason, I was afraid he would get angry with me, or even worse, confide in me, I wanted Nada. So I finally did need to speak to him, he told me. We need to figure out what we are going to do this summer. What are we doing? We are doing nothing. I was confused. He told me it's going to be impossible for him to handle the kids during the summer while he is working. He said he was barely holding on by a thread, as it is now. This isn't a problem we have faced in the past, as I'm a teacher and I'm off all summer, so I handle the kids 100% during the summer months. I don't think he took the summer into consideration when he demanded 50-50 physical custody. So his suggestion was to enroll the children in a camp when he had them. A camp? So do you want to enroll our children in a camp from 8 to 6 on the days you have them? How is that spending time with them? So, my suggestion was let's do the 35-65 split for July and August, and he can have the kids on weekends and see them in the evening whenever he wants. He was furious. It's always about custody with you, he said. Wait wait wait, this isn't about custody, you just said you can't handle them, I'm offering to give up the first real summer vacation I've ever had to keep them to help you and I'm the bad guy here, make this make sense, he claims the kids need to socialize. In the past nine years, he has never cared if the children socialize, but now it's a big deal. This was the man who rolled his eyes and complained about having to go to a kid's birthday party for three hours, so I left it alone, let him sit on the thought for a bit, a few days later to be proactive I sent him information about summer camps, along with price lists, camp would cost between $250 and to $350 a week, the camps I found are only for five weeks, leaving most of August without child care for him, how does this help, how is this spending time with the kids, putting our children in an expensive weekly camp during COVID, just so you can give them dinner a bath, and put them to bed doesn't help them or your relationship with them. My family owns a house by the beach, I will be down there most of the summer with the kids, when I'm home we have friends we hand visit and we have a yard at our house, for the children to play in, the children, will be happy, socialize with family and friends, and most importantly be safer with me, than in a camp. Lastly I will add, that he has yet to pay me child support for April and May, he moved out in March, took the kids for eight overnights in April, it should have been 15, and has yet to give me a dime for April and May, but he can afford almost $1,300 and in-camp fees just to have his custody. This is, even more, proof that his actions are not about what's best for the kids, it's just a competition with me, again, to make this make sense, get the papers, the papers, I'm officially in the court system with a docket number, and everything, it is on its way to becoming official, and I am elated, my STBX does not seem that excited, this past weekend he flew out to her state and attended a family wedding as her guest. I'm happy they are taking these steps as a couple because if they are happy he will move and the farther away he is the better when he return. He was excited about the divorce, asking me when the lawyer would send him paperwork to sign and what the timeline was moving forward. He was on cloud nine after his vacation and wished to hurry the process up. The day he was having his share of paperwork notarized was also the day I was going to pick up the children from him. When I got there he was short with me, I could, hell he was on the verge of a panic attack he hurried us away and then texted me later explaining he in fact was in the beginning stages of a panic attack, but why, he told me he was feeling overwhelmed, between the kids work managing a household and maintaining a social life, he felt burnt out, wow, this sounds oddly familiar, this was my story for the past 10 years, the reason I didn't go on date nights as often as he liked was for this exact reason part of me felt bad because I know what that feeling is like, but another part of me relished the thought of his struggling and coming to the realization, but that was my life and the reason for his cheating, so how should I react, after I took a second to think I blurted, wow, that sucks. I'm taking the kids to the beach this weekend. See you Monday morning when you pick them up. I decided to give him the support he gave me for 10 years. If anyone knows what movie this post title is from then you know, you gotta do what your heart tells you to do. D-Day. Sunday, it's happening. The day I've been waiting for, and he has been dreading. I'm going to meet my girlfriend. I'm honestly excited. He, on the other hand, is in a panic. And I understand why I exploded on that woman on the phone and said some terrible things. And I also understand it's going to be hard for him to hide his lies about me being insane when we are face to face. He texted me a few days ago and told me that he would be picking the boys up on Father's Day to head down the shore with them, and she would be accompanying them. When they come to pick up the boys, we can chat. I'm fine with that. I'm actually relieved he wasn't planning on taking the boys to the shore alone, 
I don't think he can handle them both on the boardwalk or in arcades. He is very worried that I will cause a scene when I meet her. It's actually the exact opposite. I plan on being myself, very friendly and welcoming. I need her to see I'm not the emotional woman that I was on the phone and in my letter. I mentioned to him via text that I would not jeopardize the good relationship he and I have had recently with each other and co-parenting by being mean to her. His exact words, I don't need you to speak about what you and I have. But why? Why wouldn't the fact that we are getting along and co-parenting be something she shouldn't know? And then I remembered. He lies. He must be telling her I'm impossible, that I'm a terrible human being. That I'm difficult and unreasonable. How can he make this lie hold water if I'm polite and friendly to her and him? The boys each made something for him, and I got a small gift from them to give him. We will present him with those things in front of her. I feel like if I saw someone who was supposed to be cruel and insane do that to their enemy, I'd have questions as well. Also, I plan on packing snacks for the boys and him for the trip, this is something I'd do whether she was there or not. Are those the acts of a crazy and hateful person? I think not. Lastly, and some of you may not agree with this, I'm going to apologize for how I spoke to her. I know she was wrong for what she did, and if she ever wants to apologize, I'd listen. But I'm not proud of how I spoke to her on the phone, that was the worst side of me I think she understands my actions, but my apology is not to get on her good side. I want to be the bigger person. I don't plan on ever being friends with this woman, but she will be left alone with my children at some point, so I'm doing this for them. Also, my selfish motive is that if she is happy and feels comfortable with my STBX, she will want him to move out of state with her. I want this. So I won't do anything to jeopardize this move. I will update you all on Sunday evening with a play-by-play -play of our meeting. My strange me cute. Since my last post, my head has been swimming. I spent so many months envisioning this moment, and now it is here, and all the scenarios I've run in my head seem like cheesy movie scenes. None of it is plausible. I finally decided yesterday not to go into this meetup, trying to prove who I am to someone, but more so just be myself and stop worrying about the impression that I leave on her. She has an opinion of me that is clouded by his lies, so there is no sense in trying to change her mind. So I asked myself, who am I? And then I remembered that before this whole fiasco, I had been the person who killed with kindness. While that kindness was manipulated by my STBX, I was the one who was in control now. So, I did what I thought was right. My children made Father's Day cards for him, and then I had them make cards for her. I had them introduce themselves and list one thing they'd like to do with her. They drew pictures and colored them, and everything was right in the world. Kill them with kindness. I texted him last night asking what time it was. He was at dinner and said he would text me back when they were done. I woke up at 6.30 with no text from him. I texted him at 6.30, 7.30 and 8 and finally received word back from him just before 9. Be there in an hour. Okay, no that is settled, what do I wear? I opted for the true-to-myself outfit, leggings, flip-flops, and a cute off-the-shoulder shirt. Very me. Hair, curly. Makeup, light but with a generous amount of mascara. It was now 9, 40, so we sat and waited. The boys grew antsy. At 10.30, I got a text that his stomach was upset, so they ran a little late. Sounds like a case of nerves to me. Then, at just before 11 they arrive. I assemble the boys and the gifts, and we come outside. There she is. Right there. Standing on my steps. For a hot second, I raged inside. I wanted to say something smart like, you left me for this? I looked over at him, and the look of panic and tension on his face told me that by doing that, I'd be the monster he had fictitiously talked about. So I went back to my motto of kindness, extended my hand, smiled warmly, and introduced myself. She. Was. Shocked. Where is this lunatic I've heard so much of? Why isn't she trying to claw my eyes? I could only imagine what was running through her head. The boys presented their gifts to Dad, and then gave her the cards. Shock took her over again. Cards that aren't death threats? How? Why? At this point, her mood went from fear to pure embarrassment. I must say, it was more delicious to watch that shift than it was to potentially pull her hair out. We hustled the boys into the car, and as my STBX walked to the other side of the car to get the man, I turned to her. Shock and fear had returned to her face. She had difficulty making eye contact with me, I could hear my STBX heart beating from ten feet away. I looked at her and said, I just want to apologize for how I first spoke to you, I was an emotional wreck, but I said some terrible things, and that was very unlike me, I know my actions were justified, but reflecting back on that day, 
I'm unhappy with how I acted toward you. Hello, shocked. Have you met our dear friend Guilt? A wave of guilt took over her as she bumbled through her own half-assed apology. She couldn't say the word affair, instead, she said, what happened? Own it, girl, just own it. But she did end her nonsensical word vomit, wishing to have a conversation with me about what transpired, I used the word transpired, most of her words were less than two syllables. My STBX, who had started to look relieved, now tensed at the idea of her and I having a chat. I've already promised myself I won't speak badly of him to her. Maybe I'll just give her a link to this thread instead. Uh-huh. Now, I look forward to her spending 48 hours with him and our kids. Now she can see his short temper and lack of patience. It is going to be very hard for him to keep up his father of the year act. I'm sure my children will give me a play-by-play -play of how their visit went. I will update you all on Wednesday when the children have returned. Thank you all again for supporting me on this journey. Today was a big day but I'm proud of my growth. Part of that growth is from the support I've received from you all. So many many thanks. Futile friends. On Sunday evening I sat home alone, a glass of white wine in hand, and replayed the morning in my head. As I sipped, I let the interaction play out in my mind and tried to analyze the scenario. My interpretation was that she was stunned, he was floored, my kids were indifferent, and I was victorious. I was pleased with my behavior, and felt that there wasn't much more that could be done. She would leave Monday evening, and it would be some time till she and I spoke again. Then, almost as if prompted by the gods themselves, my phone pinged. Random number with a strange area code. My heart dropped. I knew it was her. I stared at my phone without opening it for a good minute. I knew that opening that text was opening a door I wasn't sure I wanted to be open. Perhaps she would just be apologizing. Or maybe thanking me for earlier. Were the kids okay? Or perhaps she would have questions or concerns about him and want an ally. I knew after opening that text no matter what it said, things would never be the same. Simple, right? Straight to the point. A message of thanks. For a split second, I regretted my decision to be kind to her. I took away some of her worry and fear, and yet, none of my emotions changed. But then I remembered, I'm not in the wrong here. I don't need anyone to tell me it's okay, because I was not to blame. We spoke a bit more, and by the end of the conversation, I felt sorry for her. She has no idea what she is getting into with him. She thinks he is her knight in shining armor, but little does she know she will have to polish and maintain that armor for him. She was just like me many years ago, blinded by shiny armor that was really just tin foil. Lies and playing pretend were all he really gave me, and I fear this will be her outcome too. The other side of that coin is that she deserves this. You had an affair. She read in my letter that this wasn't the first time I suspected he was unfaithful, yet she thinks it will be different with her. Come on, sis. You're smarter than this, you gotta do better, girl. After I picked up the boys, they gave me rave reviews about her and their father. It seems they were rightfully spoiled while she was there, and daddy didn't yell or lose patience once. Amazing, huh? My youngest asked me if this was his new sister. I had to explain the concepts of separation, divorce, and parents dating. Apparently, even with his girlfriend in the room, my STBX avoided an actual conversation with our kids. Sigh. Some things never change. So, while they won knockoff Marvel prizes at the arcade with her and their dad, it seems she has won the biggest knockoff prize of them all. My first second. I'm sorry for those of you who love the dirt and gossip about my STBX. This is not a post about him. This is a post about me. A little while back, I sat in my home in silence. The children were gone, and I was in a partial meditation slash trance, thinking about what I wanted my future to look like. I'm 38, I have two children, a job, friends, gray hair peeking from my temples, a tight family, future schooling for my third degree, a mortgage, cellulite and a kind, but damaged heart. Where do I go from here? and more importantly, who would want to go with me. Dating was easy in my twenties. My skin was tight, I could be spontaneous, everything I owned fit perfectly, and going on an 11 p.m. date for drinks was totally doable. I'm not that girl anymore. So, how does a woman like me meet a man who will like me? I'm lost. Are there bars? Nightclubs? Pottery painting? I've seen speed dating on TV. Does that really exist, or is that reserved only for sitcoms? Reluctantly I googled how to date in your thirties. Some of you have probably beaten me to the punchline, but the answer was right in front of me. Online dating. I cringed. Having no real reason not to, I created an online dating profile. 
I filled in all the blanks, set my preferences, uploaded a few pictures of the outfits that fit right and the lighting that was superb and published the page. I walk away from my phone, full of nervous energy, and grab a snack, the chocolate will help. After I eat out of pure anxiety, I return to my phone. I have a message from the app. I'm afraid. I ignore it out of fear, and strangely, guilt. Fear that he may be a serial killer and guilt because while my STBX has moved on, I feel guilty that I am still legally married and on a dating site. I do the only logical thing next, I go to bed. I lay in bed and try to remember what a first date is like. The awkward hello, is it a handshake, hug, kiss on the cheek, full open mouth sloppy kiss, the cumbersome chit chats, this weather is crazy, read any good books lately, wow how about the Mets, and of course the uncomfortable goodbye. Uh, I don't know how to do this, even if I can. Do you talk about your ex? Or do you avoid it like the plague? Do you be no nonsense and get right to the good and bad of yourself so as not to waste time? Honestly, who has time to date casually at this age? I tell myself to go to sleep. Eventually I listen. I awake to sunlight, the hum of the AC, and a pinging phone. I have a text from my mother and 14 messages all from the dating site. This must be a mistake. I must have put the wrong age or been too lenient with my preferences. I scroll through message after message and see that these men all share the same thing. They are interested in learning more about me, I sift through profiles like they are resumes for a job and land on three potential candidates. All around my age and location, all divorced, and all wishing to converse with me. My nerves have not transitioned to excitement but peppered with a bit of anxiety. This is it, I'm doing it, officially jumping into the deep, dark dating pool. After a few days of chatting with all three, I solidified my suitor. Soon, I will be engaging in my first and second dates. Wish me luck, and I will update you soon.